Hey, hi, and howdy to all my sweet friends out there. Thank you guys for joining me here. If you are new, my name is Courtney, and it is time for my weekly meal prep. I do these videos, I do grocery hauls, and I do what's for dinners. If you like that stuff, stick around, hit subscribe, and check out my playlist. All right, let's get a cooking. So this week's meal prep is pretty short and sweet. Um, if you watch my grocery haul, you know that sickness has hit my house. Oh, I was not prepared for it at all. My middle son Cam picked up something, I guess, because we just started um, going to co-op and stuff. You know, it's like the back to school bugs. Even though we homeschool, we still get that kind of stuff. And um, he picked something up the other day and he was so kind as to share it with me. So I did keep it pretty short and sweet for the meal prep, but I did want to make sure that we had some fun stuff over the weekend just because I definitely wanted my weekend off to like sit and chill and like just try to get better. So I'm starting off with this um, French silk brownie thing. I saw this on um, another YouTuber's channel, The Wads. I will link the recipe I used down below. I just had to look it up. I didn't use the one that she used. Well, I don't know if I did or not. I did not go back to her video and reference it. I just went to Pinterest and found something that looked exactly the same, sounded exactly the same, so here we are. So I took a box of Ghirardelli brownie mix. That is what she used. And I don't know that I've ever tried this flavor, but I do hear that Ghirardelli really is the best brownies. So I decided, what the heck, let's go for it. And I splurged and bought it. And then um, you don't necessarily follow the box instructions. You use milk instead of water, one egg, and then melted butter instead of oil. It makes a very thick brownie. So I spread that in my big greased casserole dish and popped that in the oven. So it can bake and it has to completely bake and completely cool. Just so you know, if you're making a bunch of stuff, start with that first. So it has plenty of time to do its thing. So I popped that in the oven. It's baking and cooling while I'm doing all the rest of the stuff. So we are having some ribs over the weekend. My husband's going to smoke ribs. They were buy one, get one free at Market Street. So it was an easy decision I wanted to have. I just needed to come up with the sides. So I decided on squash casserole and this caprese pasta salad. Both were delicious. <clears throat> both were a hit. My family loved them. So I highly recommend both of them. Squash casserole is super simple. You know, it is summertime, so like fresh vegetables are pretty plentiful. So I just sauteed some squash and some onion together with a little salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. And I'm setting that to the side and letting it cool. And then we will assemble our casserole. So while that is cooling, let's make our pasta salad. I just boiled some orzo because that's what I had on hand and uh, drained it and added it to a bowl with some sliced up cherry tomatoes and a little bit of pesto and some salt and pepper and um, I do add a little bit of olive oil in here as well just to kind of keep everything from sticking together because you know the orzo is kind of starchy. You could use any kind of noodle you want. I had these and it's not exactly orzo, they're called um, melon seed. It's by a Mexican brand of pasta that I buy um, where I live down here in Texas, but it looks just like orzo for the most part. So we're just going to say I used orzo, <laughs> but again, you can use whatever kind you want. So I just got those cherry tomatoes sliced in half and my pesto from a jar, nothing fancy. Um, I will link the original recipe, which I am not necessarily following because <laughs> I'm working with what I have on hand and stuff. I saw this and it was perfect because I needed to use up that whole milk or the buffalo mozzarella that I have there. I had bought it the other day and made a couple things, but I had a little bit left and I needed to use it. So this was the perfect recipe. And then I'm just going to put in a little bit of that balsamic glaze because that stuff is so delicious and so good. And I love it on caprese salad. And that's really all there is to it. There it is. This looks fantastic. If you like caprese salad, it was a nice, fresh punch of flavor that my whole family really, really likes. So I do recommend that one. Um, tomatoes are in season right now, so it's a great time to make something like that. All right, back to our squash casserole. It is cooled off, so I'm gonna go ahead and start assembling the casserole. The reason I let it cool is because I put that egg in there and I don't want to scramble it. I want it to be like a binder to kind of help hold the casserole together. So I let the squash and the onions cool while I made the pasta salad. So for like 10, 15 minutes total. Then I added in my egg and scrambled it up and I'm gonna add in some sour cream and mix that up. I will link a recipe down below from Pinterest. It's what I'm following, but I'm just kind of playing fast and loose with measurements because that's how I roll, y'all. I feel like cooking like gives you ideas, but you have to kind of make it your own because you know what you like, you know what your family likes, right? So you might like more or less of a certain ingredient. For instance, I don't really care for cumin. And if you watched my last What's For Dinner, I did add cumin into a dish that I knew I shouldn't have. And I did and I didn't like it. I should have followed my instincts because I know what I like. I know what my family likes. So I kind of feel like cooking is just like that. It just kind of gives you a general idea of how to make something and you kind of play with the ingredients and make it your own. That's what I do with pretty much every recipe. And I really think everyone should do that because you're going to enjoy your time in the kitchen and the dishes that you make so much more if you do that. 
All right, so I just added in some Parmesan cheese and some shredded cheddar cheese. And then I've got my little casserole dish here. It's just my husband and myself. Sorry for my fun camera work there. <laughs> my camera was sitting in front of the cabinet with my spray. <clears throat> So it's just my husband and myself eating this casserole over the weekend. So I'm not making a big one, just a small one. My oldest is out of town. He went to Comic-Con with some friends. And my younger two don't like squash casserole. So just for me and my, my husband, really. But it was perfect because it's a small casserole. And we ate on it um, for the whole three-day weekend. So it was great. Uh, anyway, now that everything's all mixed together, I added it to my greased casserole dish there. And then we're going to top it with some fun things. A little bit more cheese, of course. Who doesn't love some more cheese? Um, this is a nice cheesy casserole, but it's really, really delicious. Um, it's got so much flavor and squash. My gosh, squash is so delicious. I love it. And I feel like I haven't been eating it as much this year. And I'm really sad about that because it's one of my favorites. All right. So then I melted some butter. Actually, I think I just used some margarine. I keep margarine in my fridge for my kids because they make like ramen and butter noodles and stuff and waffles. Um, that way we don't just blow through the expensive butter. I think I just grabbed that and melted it. And I'm mixing in a sleeve of crushed Ritz crackers for our cracker topping. I never said this was a healthy casserole just because it has some vegetables. Doesn't make it ha healthy. It's got a ton of cheese and ton of butter and a ton of flavor. You're going to love it. <laughs> just don't bother looking at the calorie count on each serving. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just like sprinkle that generously over the top of our casserole dish. And this is going to bake up nice and crispy and crunchy and delicious and have like this great buttery taste and offer some texture. Now, I'm not actually cooking the casserole today. I'm going to just put the lid on it and pop it in the fridge and we're going to cook it um, the following day whenever my husband is smoking the ribs. That way our whole meal comes together at the same time. And that's what it looks like after it bakes. It doesn't really change much. But man, this is so, so good if you've not tried a squash casserole. Check out the recipe I'm linking down below and give it a shot. All right, back to our brownies. They have cooked. They have cooled. So let's make them even better. These are so decadent and delicious. So I've got this block of cream cheese. It's been softening on the counter um, for quite a while, actually. We ended up having to run to the doctor this day for my middle son, Cam. And it is just like a viral upper respiratory infection. So nothing special. Um, we got some medicine and we are all on the mend now. But... This was sitting on the counter the whole time we were gone, so it was nice and soft, which was fantastic, actually. I popped it in my mixer with my whisk attachment, and I just let it kind of whip some air into it and added a little bit of vanilla to it for some extra flavor. You could add um, almond extract, too, I think would be fabulous, or cherry extract. Ooh, that would be so good. But I just stuck with the recipe and did vanilla. So then I'm going to melt some butter and some chocolate chips together in the microwave. That's going to make this chocolatey delicious. So I've got those going in little 30 second intervals to melt the butter and the chocolate together without scalding it. While that's doing its thing, I am going to go ahead and add in a couple of cups of powdered sugar and slowly beat that into our cream cheese mixture. This is so good. It's not an icing, but it could be an icing. I mean, it's rich and it's dreamy. It really had like a lot of cheesecake vibes going on for me. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. The only thing I would change was the cook time for the brownies. Mine got a little hard because I feel like they baked just a little bit too long. So if you're making this at home, kind of keep an eye on that so that you always don't get hard around the edges like mine did. But, I mean, we still ate the whole thing. It was delicious. All right. So now I'm adding in that melted chocolate mixture there to make this chocolatey, delicious, and rich, and amazing. If you like brownies and chocolate, this is... This is a dish you got to try. It seems like a lot of work, but because you have to space it out to cool the brownies, it really didn't take much effort on my part at all. It was really pretty simple. So I'm just going to let my mixer do the work for me and just kind of get the chocolate mixed in with everything. Um, this is a great time to pull out your stand mixer if you've got one or a hand mixer just to kind of get everything incorporated really, really well and get it um, light and airy and fluffy. So it's all light and delicious when we add in our final ingredient, which is just a container of whipped topping. Cool Whip if you buy the name brand stuff, whipped topping if you buy the generic like me. I got the extra creamy because that's my personal preference, but you can just buy whatever it is you like or make your own. Totally up to you. And then I'm folding it in. I did speed up the video, so I'm not actually like being as rough with it as it looks like I am. I am gently folding it in to keep all the air in there that I can to make it light and fluffy and delicious. And this was very um, mousse-like. I actually do make a mousse a lot of times during the summer, a dark chocolate mousse in a similar fashion. And I should make that sometime here on my channel because my family loves it. And it's so simple. Anyway, just set that off to the side. And there are those brownies I was talking about. See, they look really good. They just got a little crunchy on the edges. So I would just kind of alter it a little bit for that. And now I'm just going to spread this on top. And I will say you're also supposed to spread a layer of Cool Whip on top of this as well. But once I got this in there, the dish looked really full. 
and I kind of felt like, wow, there's a lot going on here. So I went ahead and stopped there. I did not add on the final layer and I have absolutely zero regrets about it in case you're wondering. This was fabulous. 10 out of 10 would do again, highly recommend whether you put on the, the whip topping at the very end or not. This was so good. It's such a great contrast. You do keep it in your fridge. You have to keep it cool. Um, but it was just so rich and delicious and it was kind of like what I didn't even know I wanted. Here it is. And it, it was wonderful. I do love chocolate. I do love a good brownie. So I highly, highly recommend this. Uh, anyway, that's the end of the meal prep. Like I said, we were sick. We did not feel well. So I kind of just, it was short and sweet and to the point, but it got us through the weekend. I hope you guys had a fantastic Labor Day weekend, three day weekend for most of us. I assume like we, my husband was off. So we were hanging out at home all weekend, which was nice. Anyway, I hope you guys had a great one, and I hope you're having a wonderful week, too. We've almost made it to the weekend, y'all. Yay! So I will see you back here on Saturday for my What's for Dinner video. Have a great one, guys. Bye.